everything I do, I do for God's glory. Um, and I also do to encourage others to um, pick up their faith and create a relationship with Jesus. So that's what that kind of represents for me. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. We have a special guest on with us today, Hannah Riddick. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I can't complain for those that don't know. She plays basketball for the University of Memphis. We're going to get into her whole story of her origin with basketball playing there. But starting off, I want to go with the, the origin aspect of it. Okay. When did you fall in love with basketball? When did that start for you? And was it possible? Because in my research, I saw you did other sports. Was it possible that it could have been any other sport outside of basketball? Okay, so it's actually kind of a funny story. So growing up in Canada, the first sport I've ever played was actually soccer. Um, but, it, you know, Canada, it tends to get kind of cold. And so I was out there playing soccer, but it would rain, it would snow, and I just, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, I don't, I was good, but I was like, I can't do this. So I decided to play basketball because I was like, it's indoors, it's controlled temperature, like, and I was pretty good. So I think that's really when I fell in love with it. And then, like you mentioned, I did actually play some other sports. I actually played volleyball, um, track. I did like the 100 meter, long jump, high jump. And then I did dabble in some badminton, but I was pretty, I was pretty bad. So, yeah, but it's, I think it's always been basketball. Yeah. So what about it outside of the weather, like really drew you to the basketball aspect? I mean, you play a lot of sports and you stuck mm -hmm. with basketball. Yeah. Um, I think for me, basketball, like there's so many different skill sets you can have within basketball. Like for like track, it's very much like, <laughs> Who can jump the highest is going to win. Who can run the fastest is going to win. But whereas basketball, I think each person has like a unique skill set that they can bring to the game. And it's like, it's not a one and done kind of thing. You know, like if you're, you're down 15, that doesn't mean anything at basketball. Like you can still win. You can still get up. And um, yeah, I just, yeah, it's just such a unique game. There's so many aspects to it. And it's just hard not to fall in love with it, honestly. So for you, right? As you mentioned, from Canada. Sorry. You're good. From Canada, right? Why mm -hmm. did you choose Memphis to be <laughs> where you play college basketball? Um, you know, Memphis kind of just took a chance on me. It was COVID. Recruiting kind of got backed up and everything. And they just watched a few of my films and were like, hey, we have a spot for you. And, you know, I never even got to see the city. I never even got to the going uh to, i never been to memphis i i really didn't know where i was going but you know i said you know they're taking a chance on me and i'm gonna take a chance on them and i from what i heard you know it was a good city it was a basketball city um had a lot of culture uh the food scene i'm a big foodie so i was like yeah and they had my degree um because school is also very important to me and so yeah i took a chance i hopped on the plane and four years later it was one of my be best decisions now, with that aspect, like you said, four years later, how was that transition? Especially, like you said, I was never in the city, never been to it, never visited. I didn't have a school tour, anything like that. I didn't get to meet some of the teammates. What was that transition like for you? It was tough at first. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. Um, even just like the culture difference between Calgary, Alberta um, and Memphis was huge. Um, that was something that I wasn't really used to. Um, just, I guess, trying to fit in with my teammates when we came from such those different cultures was also kind of tough for me at first. Um, and just getting oriented in a new city, I think for anyone is just kind of different. And then like the, their basketball, you know, um, it was definitely more competitive than I was used to in some, in Canada on the regular. Um, just like, going when I we started getting into the season and playing other schools and stuff it was definitely um very competitive but I do feel like the OSBA um which I played in Canada uh definitely helped prepare me for that but yeah 
for you, which I, I think that's dope to even take that chance. Um, a lot of people would have taken that chance because it can it can be scary and it definitely is a transition. Uh, and like you said, the culture shock aspect. But for you, growing up, who were some players that you you looked up to or that inspired you to pick up a basketball? Okay, so um, growing up, I didn't actually like WNBA wasn't streamed like when I was really young. So I watched just a lot of NBA. Um, and I love Steph Curry. I know I play nothing like Steph Curry, but I love Steph Curry. And I just thought he was so amazing. Like when he played basketball, it was like he was painting a picture. Like it was like poetry in motion or something. And I just, I remember watching, um, I think it was the Warriors versus Cavaliers. Like the Warriors had just beat OKC. And I was watching that game and it was just, I was on the edge of my seat and I was like, it was just like a thrill like no other. And I think just why I still love to watch him to this day. And then I love Kevin Durant. I loved how he was kind of this like forward guard combo. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was big, so he could go down low. He could bang a little bit, but he could also shoot and could also dribble. And uh, I kind of saw myself in him and realized like I could kind of create my game after that. Now, it's funny you mentioned stuff with what recently happened. Did you watch that recent game that they just had against Serbia and if you did, being that Steph is one of your favorite players, what was that like? Where were you at? How did you feel watching that game? And Steph goes off for 36 points. And like you said, it was poetic and it was exciting. Every single shot he made, it was just pandemonium. Right. So actually, I have not watched the full game. I watched part of it. Um, and I definitely saw like, but he's amazing. He's amazing every game I watch. Like, I'm just. I fall in love with watching him again and again. And um, I also, I have uh, watched some like WNBA players. Like I really like Diamond Shields when I came up. Um, she was fun to watch. Candace Parker, she's kind of that mobile forward too. So, you know, as I got older and I got uh, the WNBA stream, um, mm -hmm. then that's when I started watching those players. But Steph for me is definitely my first love. Yeah. That's not a bad first love to have. So. No, not at all. And you mentioned great names too, Diamond DeShields and Candace Parker, some of my favorite players for sure. With you, right? You wear mm -hmm. number you wear number seven. Is there any significance or reason behind choosing number seven? Um, it's the perfect number. It's God's number. And um, as a Christian, that's just that's something that's near and dear to me. And I um everything I do, I do for God's glory. Um and I also do to encourage others to um, pick up their faith and create a relationship with Jesus. So that's what that kind of represents for me. Love that. Love, mm -hmm. love that and the being open about it, which mm -hmm. is another thing that some people don't, you know, acknowledge. But that's the one of the things I love about Steph also is his openness, yes. his willingness to talk about God, to talk about Jesus, to promote. Also, this is just my personal favorite. He promotes a lot of the Christian hip hop artists. The yes. Plays, the Andy Minios, which mm -hmm. I think is really dope. Like they asked him um, during the Olympics, uh, the practices before they, they flew out, what do you listen to before the game? He's like, look, right? I was like, got it. I, yeah. I appreciate, I really truly appreciate that. That's just me. For you, right? Your senior season, what are you looking forward to most this upcoming season? What are you working on during the summer to? add to your game? Uh, I think for me, um, now I get to be in a senior role. Like, I think it looks a lot more different for me. Like, it's definitely a more pressure and I felt it this summer going through practices. Um, I think the team is definitely looking for me to be a big scoring threat um, and a big like rebounding threat. Um, but with that, I think it's, it's a privilege that um, is exciting as well. You know, it's like, like what I said, it's, it's a privilege, you know? Um, to get the team to rely on you, um, to, you know, sometimes have to put the team on your back. And I'm also looking forward to having, like, a leadership role. Um, I had a little bit last year, but I feel like this year, at being a senior, I definitely have a bigger role. Um, some of the things I've been working on um, is definitely my shooting. I feel like every year I work on my shooting, but I think we got it this year. Um, and just being more versatile. So um, you might see some coast-to-coast. Um, more dribbling out of me. Uh, I might be playing the three sometimes. 
Um, and also something I've been working on, it's not really on the court, but it's um, just being more vocal. I'm kind of like a quieter player. Um, so just being more vocal is definitely something I've been working on. Those are all dope things. And basically, so up until this point, your leadership approach more has been so with action more than words. Exactly. exactly. And this year you're going to mix in the vocal with the action. Yes. Yes. That's, that's dope. Um, I mm -hmm. think it's always intriguing to see people's leadership styles because everybody leads differently mm -hmm. and each player needs something different. So I'm pretty sure you've built relationship with your teammates to know like this person, I might have to talk to this person. Yeah. They'll, see, they'll see me getting in the gym early and they'll follow suit. So I think that's dope. And yes, that's definitely a different type of pressure on your plate. Yes. Coming up. It's outside of the, cause that aspect is going to affect also like how your teammates play. Exactly. How you guys do so i think that's dope and i think it's really cool that you're taking it like head on and like you said it's mm -hmm. an opportunity and it's a privilege which yes. a lot of people don't view it as a privilege no <laughs> entitled so i like yes i like that mindset um for you right we already talked about players that you looked up to growing up uh when it comes to the family aspect what role like did your family play in you being successful, being at this point where you were actually able to play collegiate basketball. Some people, you know, aren't as good, but you obviously were good enough to play at that level. So what role did the family play in achieving that goal? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, my family was everything. Like without my family, I definitely wouldn't be playing in Memphis. But um, I think my dad, he took more of the role of the pushing, like pushing me um, to be better, um, the coaching aspect where my mom was more like the emotional support aspect. Cause you know, sports get hard and you know, you get down on yourself. And so I think they just had that kind of balance. Um, and my siblings, I think they really put, I have two younger sisters. Um, and they just push me cause I know they look up to me and I know, um, I'm a role model for them. And so it just pushes me to be the best at everything I do and put my all into it so that hopefully when they get older, they're even better than, than I was. Um, and yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, my parents, they sent me across the country, which was hard. I was 15. You don't really want to send your 15 year old kid across the country to live with someone uh, that, you know, you barely met. Um, but they did. And um, playing at Ottawa really helped me um, kind of get seen and stuff. And now I'm here in Memphis. So, yeah. So you mentioned that aspect where sports can get hard. And I yeah. have two sisters that play sports also. And kind of the same role. My mom and pop say the, played the same kind of role that you mentioned your parents played. For you, though, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going when those tough times come? Like, how do you say, all right, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to give up. Um, I think two things. I think the first thing is I try and look back and get some perspective and realize how far I've come and how there was other times where I felt like I couldn't get through time, get through it. Um, I wouldn't see the other side of it, and I always did. And then kind of connecting into that is my faith. You know, I always know that um, what is meant for me will be for me. That's what I say to myself a lot. Um, and that through the strength of Jesus Christ, there's nothing I can't accomplish. And so even in those tough moments where I'm just like really frustrated, really down on myself, like, um, I feel like Christ gives me that extra push to persevere. Sounds like Philippians 4.13 right there, mm -hmm. essentially, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Before we transition to our fourth quarter segment, where it's kind of some of the fun questions, last one I have to ask anybody that's watching this, female or male, what advice would you give them that might have aspirations of saying, I want to play collegiate ball, I want to do what Hannah's doing? Um, are you saying for people who don't play basketball or people who do play basketball? People who do play basketball. Um, I would say some advice for them just in college ball in general is um, make sure you're doing your school. I know that's not common advice, but a lot I know a lot of people who, you know, they've had to take um, take years off or, you know, they couldn't go to certain schools because, you know, they're kind of like, oh, I'm just a basketball player. But at the end of the day, you're also a student. So you got to make sure you do your um, your schoolwork to keep you eligible. Um, and then I also say to them, 
um, work on your your mental toughness. Work on your mental side as well. I feel like that's a side that a lot of people kind of push to the side, but it's a very important aspect, and it will be tested a lot in college. Like if you feel like you've been tested in high school, you'll come to college and it's nothing. You have you know you have coaches like yelling down your throat, you have all this pressure, you have the fans, you have your family at home, you're living by yourself. It's just, it's a different level of pressure and you have to make sure that you're not only physically ready for that, but mentally ready for that. And then the third thing I would say is enjoy it. You know, just embrace every aspect, minute, second, you know, even when you're on the line or running for days and you're just tired and you like hate your life, um, you'll miss it eventually. Cause I know like I'm coming in my senior season and it just feels like college just went by like so quick. So I would say, you know, enjoy each and every moment and um, go at each opportunity with gratitude because um, at one point, one version of yourself uh, prayed for this and now you're living it. So yeah, that's what I would say. That's a bar right there. <laughs> that's a bar right there. Fourth quarter segment. As you mentioned, you're a foodie. I'm a foodie also. I eat okay. for three. I eat for three, even though it's only one of us. So I so definitely... it sounds like you're a big back over there. Oh yeah, I'm a part of the big back community. I gotta. I definitely have my community card. I've been a member <laughs> for about 16, 17 years. So. Yeah, me, yeah, fair enough. Me too. Me yeah, too. I've, been, I've been running for office, trying to see if I become president. Oh, and, okay. You know, I'm. I eat a little too healthy to be part of the, the president of the big back community. Yeah, yeah. See, I feel you. I think maybe I would be Senate. Maybe a Senate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's well, one thing that you can eat and you won't get tired of? Ice cream. I'm an ice cream addict. I am. Like, I think I eat ice cream every day when I'm at college. I think I do. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but I'm also not ashamed. And I'll eat it. I'll eat it in the morning, too. Like, it's just, there's no, there's no time frame. Like, time appropriate time to eat um, ice cream. I could eat it whenever. Any particular flavor or ice cream in general? Uh, see, I like to mix it out. Um, I like moose tracks. I don't know if you've heard of that. Okay. Um, yeah, moose tracks, but I also like uh, vanilla, but then with like a little topping, like a little like berry topping or chocolate fudge action. Yeah. That's... Okay, I can dig it. See, I, I'm a big ice cream fan too, but I love to have it paired with something. So like, for example, I can't eat apple pie, peach cobbler, any of that. Okay, that's valid. Unless I have, I need to have ice cream with it every single, every single time. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Exactly. It doesn't taste you can't right. eat pie plain, that's weird. Exactly, and then like, there's so many flavors, moose tracks, chocolate chip cookie dough, yeah. regular vanilla, the Colombian cookies, like it is. Colombian cookie. I might have to look into that one. I haven't heard. Is one of it's a spot over here that has Colombian cookies, like the Colombian cookies mixed in with it, with like a little bit of uh, espresso mixed into the ice cream. Mm, that sounds good. Extreme, extremely good. Favorite holiday? Um, I like Christmas. I think it just brings everyone together and. It's just so festive, and I don't know. It's I just love Christmas. Favorite holiday for me, also. You, it wasn't on the list, but I'm pretty sure you could pull one. What would be your favorite scripture? Ooh, okay. I I have this. Let me let me just look because I'm forgetful. Because no I need to make sure I get it the right. But it's Romans. I want to say eight thirty three, and it goes. Um, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I just, I kind of love it because it's like, it's basically stating, it's like, if with God on our side, what could stop us? Like, what can prevent you from prevailing? Uh, what can get you down? What can go against you? And it's just nothing. Nothing can go against you if God is for you. No disagreement here. Amen on that for sure. Three things, you, when you leave your house, three things that you have to have when leaving your home? That I have to have? Um, yes. My phone. Hand sanitizer. I'm a germaphobe. I have to have my hand sanitizer. And water. I know that's really basic, but I, 
I hate, like, I have a pet peeve of being thirsty in inconvenient moments and then not having anything to drink. And I, I'm a germaphobe, so I can't drink out of public fountains. See, so it's, they all, they're all kind of connected. It's all connected. The math is mapping. I get it. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you win the lottery, three things, first three things that you would buy. Oh, probably celebratory ice cream. And then, <laughs> and then probably some new shoes. I think I need some new shoes. Okay. And then maybe some stocks. I've been mean, I need to start investing. So I'll probably buy some stocks and get into that. Okay. That's a smart business move right there. Exactly. Make sure the money keeps, keeps working for you. Exactly. Yep. Last one before we close out, would you rather Okay. a lifetime chef or a lifetime chauffeur? A lifetime chef or chauffeur? Definitely a chef for sure. Yeah. I could drive. I can drive myself, but you don't always want to cook a meal, you know? So. 100% understand that one for sure. Yes, Miles, are you too tired? You don't want to cook. Exactly. That would come in handy then. Hey, we are definitely, we'll be looking forward to, we'll be watching this upcoming season. I tell all of our guests, this is your home podcast. So if you at some point drop 25 and 12 and you want to come talk your stuff, you you always, you just got to send a DM <laughs> and you can hop on with us at any point, any given time. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out, hopping on with us. Y'all know the vibes, though. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Benchmark, we out. Peace.